You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. All right, everyone, thank you for listening, and welcome back to another episode of the Wisconsin Sports Rocks podcast on the Packernet Podcast Network. My name is Sam Holman, and I'm here with my co-host, McQuaid Arnold. McQuaid, how are you doing? I'm good. I had a, a week off hiatus. I was back home in Wisconsin last week, so it was, it was a good time, but I'm glad to be back on the podcast and uh, go over another positional review. Yeah, yeah, this, this series is... Uh, been going pretty well so far. Uh, we kind of cover most of the, pr- pretty much all of the defense over the last couple pods, so you can go back and listen to those if you're interested. Um, now we're going to be starting on offense, and we're going to be starting with, specifically with uh, the quarterback room. Obviously, it's a really interesting room, a really important one for the Packers Super Bowl hopes um, with Aaron Rodgers, and even one that's going to be really intriguing and kind of a question mark with uh, Jordan Love behind him. So it'll be, it's definitely a, are one of the most intriguing position rooms I think in the in on, on the team. Um, but yeah, let's let's get right into it. So, um, the once again, just to remind everyone, listeners, uh, the format for these generally we just go over the players at each position. Um, what so, what some of the roster battles we might see are, um, and then just go over some bold predictions and that sort of thing. So we'll we'll go over that for the quarterbacks. Um. Um, but yeah, just starting from the top. Obviously, the starter is Aaron Rodgers. I mean, he's a he's a Hall of Fame level talent, multiple MVP, multiple All Pro player, um, and he's a guy who a lot of the Packers Super Bowl hopes are going to be riding on. And especially with you know Devontae Adams gone, and they're gonna he's going to be someone they're going to be leaning on more as they as they kind of look to re reshape their offense. No, so this this is going to be something where where I brought it up last last uh, an article I wrote. Um, Aaron Rodgers signed a 150 million dollar extension, right? We all know that he's top three best quarterback in the NFL, maybe you know best quarterback. It, it, the, the margin of error is so minimal between Brady, Mahomes, and Rodgers. To be honest yeah. with you, that he's in that group, right? But that's besides the point. This is going to be the year that he earns that $150 million contract. Mm. Um, He's going in and he's going to have a a lot of games like the Arizona Cardinals game last year, right? That that game, Aaron Aaron Rodgers earned his darn contract, right? Yeah. The the playoff game in San Francisco, against San Francisco, excuse me, me, not so much. Uh, So we're going to have to consistently see that that Arizona Cardinals level play from Aaron Rodgers. And it's not all Aaron Rodgers. It's it's hundred percent Matt Lafleur scheme yeah. running game offensive line. It's a lot that goes in it. But Aaron Rodgers will be that one that be the guy that quote unquote makes the whole thing go. And um, we're gonna see we're gonna see how just how well he can make players around him better because there is if Aaron Rodgers wins the Super Bowl this year with this roster specifically it, Green Bay has a great roster great roster yeah. but specifically this wide receiving core. He has to be going down as one of the best quarterbacks of all time, and and yeah. and even more so than he already is. Right, this is going to be the year that that Aaron Rodgers, I believe. Right, I, I have a, I have a sneaking suspicion this this is Aaron Rodgers' last year in Green Bay. Could be wrong, maybe two more years, but I think he hangs it up after this year, no matter what. And I think he hangs it up after this year because one of two things happens: either A, Green Bay wins the Super Bowl and he rides off in the sunset, or B, Green Bay just has an abysmal year. Uh, or or another early you know playoff yeah. exit and Aaron Rodgers is like hey I just want to go golfing you know the rest of my life so yeah. um, but this is it you know Aaron Rodgers earn your darn money this year earn your darn contract this year by making those around you better yeah yeah I I definitely agree and I think that I think that what his role is going to kind of be is the guy who who 
makes up for that margin of error that's gone now that Devonte Adams is is no longer on the roster, right? With, with Devonte Adams, they could just they could put him in one on one situations. They knew, you know, ninety five percent of the time he was going to win, whether he was the the corner was pressing him, whether he was in a bunch, you know, where, wherever he was on the field, they could trust on him to win, and that really allowed the rest of the offense to excel around him. And so it's going to be, it's up to, you know, Aaron Rodgers. And like you mentioned, Matt LaFleur is also going to be a big part of this, but a lot more weight is going to be put on Aaron Rodgers to make up for that margin of error that's gone now that Devontae Adams is off off the team. I think um, it's going to be interesting. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. I think it's going to be interesting also, like you mentioned, the relationship that he develops with these wide receivers, yeah. right? There, there's reports of him loving the Sammy Watkins signing, and now there's reports of already him being a, a, a training camp cut candidate, right? There's... There's none of that stuff really matters right now, but it's just it's just kind of gives uh, a full spectrum of anyone could be Green Bay's wide receiver one. Now, are there a few favorites? Randall Cobb, Alan Lazar, Sammy Watkins, sure, but realistically, anyone. If Romeo Dubs comes in and just hits hits the ground running with Aaron Rodgers and is catching everything that comes by him or comes near him, I wouldn't be surprised if we had a rookie or Christian Watson be the the wide receiver one. I wouldn't be surprised if Aaron Jones was wide receiver one in this offense this year, right? It's, it's, it's just going to be really interesting to see, like I mentioned earlier, how he manages, you know, this roster and this wide receiving core, but also who he develops that relationship with early and, and how we see that transform throughout the season. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's part of the reason why guys like Randall Cobb and Alan Lazard have kind of a leg up over the, the rest of the wide receiver room um, is because they, they already have that trust, right? You know, Alan Lazard, he was kind of the other guy besides Devontae Adams that you would see Rodgers, you know, throw those back shoulder fades to. He didn't do it as much, obviously, but, you know, the question is if the, now that Devontae is gone, Will Rogers like how much does he trust Alan Lazard? Like obviously he trusts him to some extent, but wh- where does he put his trust trust in the players on the roster? Because that's going to drive a lot of the how how the offense performs. You know if he's willing to you know throw the ball to those guys, even if he yeah if if he's just willing to to trust them and kind of um, use them to uh, push push the offense down the field. You know keep the offense on track that sort of thing. Um, yeah, and and so speaking on that, Alan Lazard, right? Devon, it, it, kind of what I think this offense is going to be looking for this season is that big play receiver, right? Devonte Adams was that all year long. Yeah. He he was everything. He was first down, second down, third down, and big play receiver, right? Who's going to be yeah. that big play receiver? Alan Lazard has shown that he can, right? Two specific mm-hmm. plays coming to mind. I believe it was two years ago against Detroit. He had that ridiculous touchdown catch uh, in Green Bay, uh, and it was the start of their comeback. Right to win that game against Detroit, and then uh, maybe that was three years ago, two years ago. It was against the Saints. Uh, they had that that bootleg yeah. play action play, and Al Nazard caught it deep over the over the Saints. So so he has shown, and I believe both those players were forty plus yards. So Al Nazard right. has shown that he can be that deep threat player. However, most of the time he's moving the sticks. He's going across the middle. He's running a short route and and move and doing the dirty work. Right? Can he be that big play receiver? He's shown at times that he can, but if he can't or if he can't do it consistently, does then that open the door for Sammy Watkins? Or are they bat- both battling for that big play receiver? Um, and then, you know, we've got those young guys. So it, it's really going to get into pick. I think it's going to take a mul- multitude of guys to replace every aspect of what Devontae Adams brought to the offense. Um, and who establishes that connection with Rodgers first is really going to have a, a, a great chance at not only making it 53, but, but having an outstanding year. Yeah, yeah, I think a lot of the conversation about like the, you know, is the Packers wide receiver room good and and all that. I think a lot of it, you know, it's it's not just the wide receivers themselves. It, it's the quarterback who's throwing the ball to them, right? He's going to be ultimately he's going to determine how good or, you know, adequate the wide receiver room is going to be. Obviously, th- those guys, you know, winning their routes that matters, um but Ultimately, he's going to be kind of the the X factor that could that can take this offense to a, a high level of execution. If he's able to, you know, stay on track, um, you know, play at the at the level that you know Packers fans expect from him, like right, that MVP level. Um, I think that this offense, can, even with Devonte being on, I think this offense can be can be very good um, if he's able to you know play on time, play within structure, just. But play to the heights that we've seen him, along with you know the the jumps that we hopefully see from guys like Alan Lazard, Sammy Watkins, maybe one of the rookies. Um, 
but ultimately it's going to be, it's going to be a partnership, right? You, you can't have, you know, it's really hard to have good wide receiver play without good quarterback play and vice versa. You know, and I think it's another interesting point to make is, is that how, so we all know that Aaron Rodgers, um, maybe we don't know to what extent, what extent, but we all know that Aaron Rodgers has very, a lot of freedom at that line of scrimmage, right? He yeah. can do almost whatever he wants to do. At least that's our perception of it. Right. So I, th- I believe the last two years, and especially in 2020, when Green Bay had the number one offense in the league, Green Bay ran the ball 47, 46, 45 percent of the time. Like it was actually close to 50 50, right? And then 2021, yeah. it was 1 percent more running, right? Like it was, you know, if it was 56, or excuse me, 46 in, in 2020, it was 47 in 2021. It was still, still very close. This season, I could realistically see them being almost 50-50, you know, 51-49 type of thing. Um, but it really depends on how much Aaron Rodgers allows that to happen. And I, I think that's another uh, a thing to watch this year is see how much he doesn't check out of a run. Um, and then maybe by the end of the year, that's a good thing. He's checking out of runs because he trusts his guys. Yeah. So maybe early on in the season, they're, they're really a run-heavy team. But by, by the end of the season, if he develop, develops those those relationships, that's the things that, that I, I want to watch this year. Um, and again, like we keep saying, this this needs to be the year that Aaron Rodgers goes out and shows that he is the best quarterback in the world, uh, no matter who's around him. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it's going to be, obviously, a, a lot of hopes are pinned on this, and possibly even jobs, though I don't think that anyone on the coaching staff is getting fired if they don't make the Super Bowl this year. It's just not the place the Packers are in. But um, yeah, uh, Aaron Rodgers is going to ultimately his performance and how he's able to operate w- in this new look offense is going to really determine if the Packers are able to get where they want to be. Yep. Um, another guy who's kind of, he, he's not as impactful or not as a weighty, his play, uh, is not as weighty, but it's still going to be something that's important for the, you know, possibly important for the future of the Packers in one way or another. Jordan Love. The, he's going to be quarterback too. I don't think you know Danny Etling or whoever they else they might bring. I don't think is going to challenge him for quarterback too. Um, obviously, a lot of eyes are going to be on him in preseason. Uh, he's been thrown on as a trade candidate. We still don't know exactly what the Packer what the Packers want to do with him. Do they? You know, like you said, Aaron Rodgers could retire after this year, and if he does, then they might want to keep Jordan Love. He's developed in the system for multiple years. He's built some rapport with some of the other some of the receivers on the roster. Um, maybe they feel that they'll have greater value in him by keeping they'll have greater value in keeping him and you know preparing him to be the the heir apparent Aaron Rodgers, kind of like we all thought he was going to be when he was first drafted. It, it's a really interesting situation where like the the Packers they they drafted him as the heir, uh, like like I mentioned. Um, and then they, you know, Aaron Rodgers, he came back or, you know, he came back. He didn't really go anywhere, but, you know, the the mystery surrounding his his future was kind of cleared up a little bit. He resigned that deal. And then we kind of all assumed, oh, that's probably the end of the Jordan Love, you know, or succession story. But it, it could still, I think it could still happen, right? He still has, I believe that he would still have one more cheap deal, cheap year on his rookie deal, and then a fifth year option, which would, I, I'm not sure the exact price, but I believe that would still be below like the, the market value of a starting quarterback. So you still have some cheap years for you to see what he's got and just try to make a decision. But he his, his play is also going to be really interesting, uh, more as a, as the Packers, you know, look to the long-term hopes at, at the future of the position. Yeah, I don't think there's been a more important preseason in Green Bay's history since maybe Aaron Rodgers was drafted. This is going to be the year that, or the preseason, that not only, like, a few things happen. Not only does Green Bay find out if they have a future in Jordan Love, like, yeah. a, like a legitimate future, right? But also, you know, say Green Bay's front office wants to go all in for this year or the next year or two if they think Aaron Rodgers can stick around – See if they can get some film on Jordan Love to make him a trade candidate, right? Yeah. Make, make make him make him you know uh, um, favorable to go to Seattle, go to Cleveland, who might not have a quarterback for the first six weeks of the season or even all year, right? Um, and there, there's going to be a number of needy quarterback. There always is every single year a number yeah. of quarterback needy teams, right? And then that puts you in a situation where maybe you get a piece that will be in Green Bay for a year or two, right? And then Aaron Rodgers. If Aaron Rodgers doesn't hang up the cleats, then hey, you got another two-year window to to um, 
play with, right? But if he doesn't, right, if Aaron Rodgers does hang it up after this year, you still have a roster that you could maybe come in and bring in a veteran quarterback, right? Every single offseason, yep. there's a Matt Ryan, there's a Matthew sure. Stafford, there's someone who wants to be traded, wants to be cut, whatever. Um, and that's gonna that could happen. You know, Green Bay could be in that in that in that mix in the playing field next year if Aaron Rodgers decides to hang it up, but they still got weapons around Rodgers or just as a team in general. Jordan Love, if they don't think he's the answer, get some darn good film on him this preseason and then ship him off and get 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 someone else that can keep this team in a, in a win-now mode for at least one to three years, you know, no, no matter who's a quarterback. Um, so, yeah, this this preseason is is massive, massive for yeah. Brian Gunnikas, which is this, which was, was his, you know, Brian Gunnikas has killed the draft, right? But for for if, whether you like it or not, Jordan Love is by far his most famous draft pick, mm-hmm. and he hasn't even played, played two games yet, you know, you know started yeah. two games yet. So, um, this is going to be big. This, 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 this huge, huge preseason for no matter what they decide to do with Jordan Love. Um, and I think everyone, everyone involved wants to see him just absolutely kill it uh, this mm-hmm. preseason. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it seems like he's, you know, just off the field, a great guy, great kid. Um, I say kid, and I think he's like the same age that I am. So, um, but yeah. yeah, he he just I think it's in the best of interests of everyone involved for him to play well, whether he's you know a, a trade candidate or you know, possibly the next starting quarterback for the for the Packers. I mean, it's it it is kind of exciting um, to to have a young quarterback like this on the roster where you can see you know is he he's he's kind of an unknown, right? It's it's like opening a a present on Christmas Day. You don't know what you're gonna get. Um, could be something amazing or it could be you know pair of underwear but um hopefully it'll be something amazing uh but yeah i'm I'm looking forward to seeing you know what he can do in camp um it's it's important to remember this is from what i remember this is basically his only his uh second real training camp of his career right yeah that's uh, another thing that that people need to remember right he's in his third year but he is he's in his second normal year right last year was his first time going it was drafted during the pandemic he Last year he had his first uh, preseason training camp, yeah. all of that stuff, and then now he's going into his second year of being able to get snaps before the season starts. So, uh, I mean, we should be evaluating him as as you know, second year quarterback, and and yeah. um, you know, with his fifth fifth year option, you know, we can still consider two more years with him in Green Bay, mm-hmm. guaranteed. Um, but yeah, I mean, we but but at the end of the day, right? We we still do have to stop making excuses for him, right? He's he's still new. <laughs> He is coming to his third actual year in the NFL. Like we need to see something this preseason. Like we need to. We we've got to find something. What we're what we're, we got to find out what we're going to do with this kid. And if worst case scenario, he just plays well enough to get something back for him, right? Something. I mean, he was a first round draft pick last. What was it? Just this past week, the 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 Patriots traded a first round draft pick, Nikhil Harry, to the Bears for a seventh round draft pick. Right, that is not what you want to do for the quarterback position. Right, you need yeah. to get something back of value for a quarterback if you took him in the first round, uh, and that's just to cover, you know, you know, Brian Gunnikust. And I'm not saying he would be out the door if, if you know, we right. got nothing for love. But it's just he's he's he, like I said before, Brian Gunnikust has done great in the draft. However, this would be a big, big, big stain on on his you know draft career so far if he does not if Jordan Love does either not pan out or he does not get something in return for Jordan Love. Yeah, yeah, it feels like, you know, in some respects, uh, like you said, I don't know that, I don't think that Brian Goodigan is going to get fired if Jordan Love doesn't work out necessarily. But it is still, you know, that's kind of his, that was kind of his career defining moves to to this point, right? That's that, I was a really impactful move. It, it arguably, you know, created the rift between the front office and Aaron Rodgers that, you know, now they appear to have mended, which is which is good to their credit. Um, but it was like it was a, an impactful, a really impactful move that will really define the the career of Brian Goodkinst. Um But yeah, that's that's all in the future. Uh, it's it's hard to tell what's going to happen. Um, hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news. So don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's us days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us days at U.S. Cellular, exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. 
Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. It's only a kick. A jump. A block. It's only a serve. It's only a tackle. A run. It's only for the fans. After all, it's only pressure. You got this. Adidas. Survivor 46 is here, and so is On Fire, the only official Survivor podcast, and we have a twist this season. The winner of Survivor 45, D. Valladares, will be joining us every week. We're going behind the scenes of the biggest moments, the how and the why things happen, and the strategy and analysis you can only get from someone like me, a Survivor winner. Listen to On Fire, the official Survivor podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. For for the the last player uh, in the in the quarterback room, I mean, I don't think we need to spend a whole lot of time on this because we've co- already kind of covered the two big guys. Um, but Danny Etling, uh, quarterback, he played for LSU, um, I believe was the school. Yeah, LSU. Um, he he's come. He's had some experience, you know, in the preseason uh, with a couple different teams. I believe at least the Patriots and possibly another team. Um, but he he's you know he's got some interesting traits. I believe he had a really long rushing touchdown with the Patriots last last year's preseason. So he's got some athleticism to him. Um, you know, he, he's probably just going to be a practice squad guy. I'm not going to look. I, I think that Jordan Love will probably start most of the snaps in the preseason. Most of the, you know, most of the training camp, you know, number two reps or whatever they do uh, with that. Um, I, I think Danny Edling will probably just be a practice squad player if if that. I mean, they might choose to bring someone on who has more experience. But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be interested to see what they what they do with him. Uh, there's always the possibility. I think we mentioned last time when we were talking about uh, Kurt Benkert being cut, um, you know, Maybe Danny Etling turns into some sort of Taysom Hill type quarterback who's, who's kind of just a, a fun gadget guy to watch. Yeah, that's what, that's what I was going to bring up. So the the resume that I got on Danny Etling, he was drafted in 2018 to, to New England, um, made the move to wide receiver actually in 2019, right, uh, where he was with Atlanta. Um, 2019 through 2020, bounced around with Seattle and Minnesota's practice squad, made an appearance in the CFL, the Canadian Football League, and then back to Seattle – and then into to Green Bay. So he's bounced around quite a bit. Uh, I think the the uh, wide receiver mark is or sorry, wide receiver comment is kind of interesting. Just that, that I mean, the, the kid's versatile. He, he, yeah. he's, he's athletic, so which you don't always get with quarterbacks. Um, so I think best case scenario, you know, absolute best case scenario, you get a few years out of this kid that can be a, a Taysom Hill on your team. Um, but even then, I think the NFL world is all laughing at what the Saints are paying. Taysom Hill right now um, to yeah. not be quarterback basically. So, you know, th- those, those are kind of a double edged sword. If you do stumble across one of those, uh, but Hey, you, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, we, we've seen crazier things happen and yeah. green Bay was the one that, that cut <laughs> Taysom Hill. So, mm-hmm. you know, if anyone's going to, going to come back and beat on the Taysom Hill, it'll be someone in green Bay. So yeah. um, if anything else, you know, hopefully he can get that, that Kurt Benker moment where he comes in and, and suits up for 53 men or suits up with 53 and then comes in and, has a game winning kneel and and against the Bears in the snow and gets a postal button on Twitter afterwards. So we'll see. Yeah, uh, we'll see. Yeah, definitely. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I think that he, you know, kind of be something you'll keep an eye on just because he's the third quarterback. Um, he's it's not like he's buried behind. Uh, I think Blake Bortles and Kurt Banker. Yeah, yeah there yeah, were like five too. quarterbacks on the roster last year. It was kind of crazy. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, that that kind of covers the the main. I mean, the old, really the only dudes at the position. Um, but we don't really have any positional battles to talk about. I think that these guys that their place on the depth chart is pretty much set. I think Gary Rogers is QB one, Jordan Love is QB two, Danny Etling if he makes the fifty three is QB three, and you know maybe Gadget Guy or whatever like we talked about. Um, but so, what were some bull predictions you had about any of the quarterbacks? 
Um, I mean, bold prediction. So I'm going to go with with um, Jordan Love in the preseason. I'm, I'm, you know, I've I've been a supporter of Jordan Love ever since it happened. Um, I just think he balls out. I think he balls out during preseason, and I think that that I'm going to go even bolder and said I think that Green Bay uses that tape to trade him. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, for for crazy, right? Crazy talk. I get it, but but for a player of value, right? They might have to choose, okay. you know, throwing some draft picks, but a player yeah. of value, like maybe Michael Thomas from the New Orleans Saints is reaching a little bit too far, right? I get that, <laughs> but, you know, if James Wilson doesn't pan out, right, you, you don't know. Yeah. You don't know what, what their quarterback situation in the future holds and, and um, or any, you know, Brendan Cooks of Texas, of the Houston. I know he just re-signed in Houston. I get that. I know that, but they have hogwash at the quarterback position right now, right? Um, and so you, you just, you just don't know. You don't know if they see enough in Jordan Love and then maybe, Hey, they, they say, Hey, we'll take Brandon or we'll, uh, we'll take Jordan Love. We'll give you Brandon Cooks and we'll just rely on the other weapons we got to, to help out Jordan Love. Um, there's a few wide receivers, excuse me, a few, yeah, there's a few teams with that, you know, maybe they have a good wide receiver, but questionable quarterback situation, Seattle, New Orleans, yeah. uh, Houston, you know, there, there, there's a few, right. That, that, and maybe, you know, right now, if you were to tell me, that I'll trade Jordan Love right now for a few years of Tyler Lockett. You know, I'm not going to complain about that. Maybe, maybe get back. Um, uh, maybe, maybe is one one for one. But you know, in that situation, we might even have to include a draft pick for Tyler Lockett. You know, um, in that type of situation. So I don't think that we'd be getting anything else in return for 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 uh, Jordan Love other than just the player. But that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for yeah. Jordan Love to absolutely ball out and then Green Bay even go more all in this season or for for this season or for this season and next season to get a ring. And uh you know, you know this this team is young. They they're honestly they've got a lot of players under contract for quite some time that are going to be, you know, that are or one of the best at their position. This team is set up to be successful after Aaron Rodgers. However, I do think that if you move on from Jordan Love, um it could be, you know, what helps you get over. He could provide enough pieces to help you get over that hump and finally win the Super Bowl and send Aaron Rodgers off in the sunset, but also not cripple your future and uh, figure out quarterback position going forward. Yeah, that's, that's a good good prediction. Um, I'd love to see him ball out as well. Like you said, I've been a, I've been a fan of him since since he was drafted. So I'd love for him to be able to find a place. For, you know, if he's not able to succeed in Green Bay, just find another place where he's able to ball out. Um, My poll prediction, I'm going to say that Aaron Rodgers has a third straight MVP season. I think he's going to throw, I'm going to say he's going to throw for over 4,200 yards, 45 touchdowns, leads the Packers to a Super Bowl, wins it, rides off into the sunset. Um, Yeah, and then uh, we'll see, you know, maybe that's with, you know, DK Metcalf or someone they trade for with Jordan Love, like you said. Uh, Maybe, you know, we see Christian Watson step up and just become a, a dominant big play receiver. Maybe Alan Lazard really takes another step and has an amazing year I'll, or a combination, all of the above. But I, th- I think that, that that'll be my, my bold prediction um, and hopefully one that comes true, right? I think everyone you know, associated with the Packers, every fan of the Packers would be ecstatic to see the Lombardi back home in Green Bay. Um, that, that, and that's, like I said, man, yeah. if, if he does that, if Aaron Rodgers does that and he, and he balls out this year, he will solidify himself. Uh, even more so, you know, he, yeah. he, I'll go on a limb and I'll say that he will be the best two ring quarterback to ever mm. play the game. And I think yeah. that's, that's not, that's not too far. I think that's a pretty sturdy limb to go on if you <laughs> win the Super Bowl with this, this, uh, this wide receiving core this year. Yeah. I'd have, I'd have to look at uh, what other quarterbacks have two Super Bowl rings, but I, I wouldn't be it's, surprised. If I mean, that was, Eli Manning check. Yeah. Uh, John Elway, I think would be one that, you know, be up in the air about, but mm-hmm. I still would take, um, yeah. Honestly, on the, I mean, I get ah uh, Peyton Manning. You know that that's one worth. Yeah, be, that'd be, it'd be iffy. It'd be iffy. <laughs> so I'll give respect where respect is due. Obviously, yeah. Peyton Manning. But hey, that's that's not that. You know, Aaron Rodgers with two rings with his resume, and Peyton Manning with two rings with his resume. They're they're not they're not that that far off from each other. Yeah, so. yeah, I I would agree, and I think they'd have the same number if the if you know if my board prediction came true and he did win another MVP. I think that'd be the same because I, I think Peyton Manning won five MB, MVPs as well. Yep, yep, he's one right behind Manning right now. Yeah. Well, hopefully hopefully that's what happens, and uh, we, all, we all get to be happy at the end of the season, um, not deal with heartbreak again. Um, but, yeah, uh, was there was there anything else you wanted to mention before we sign off? Uh, no, I think that's it. Just for all the, the people listening out there, for uh, 
it's either going to be next week or the week after. We'll do our fan mailbag, so look up for that. Um, for question and answers, shoot us the, the most difficult questions you got, and we'll, we'll try to go over them on here. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for listening to another episode of this Wisconsin Sports Rocks podcast on the Packernet Podcast Network. Uh, we will see you again soon.